statistical mathematical fact. Never has been down. Has broken every single record. There is no asset that has come close. It's the only thing in the industry that was not touched, that was not hacked, and it never fails doing what it promised in 2009. It's never What's failed. What's the best performing asset the world has ever seen? And you'll find Boom. out that it's... <laughs> Boom. All right, traders, Bitcoiners, welcome. Welcome. Welcome to another live session with Oliver Velez. Of course, my name is Oliver Velez. And uh, as usual, we're going to talk about our favorite topic, Bitcoin today. And I need this today, guys, because I had a rough day in the trading market. It's a little rough today. Um, back and forth, I was down, then I was up, and then I was down again and uh, wound up negative today. But uh, that's something I can't recoup myself from. So anyway, one of these uh, Bitcoin talks is going to cheer me up a little bit. I don't really have losing trading days very often. So when they hit, they uh, they sting a little bit, you know, hate it. Anyway, <laughs> loss is part of the game. Um, so anyway, I came across some topics today, guys, that or some comments in my feed today regarding a post I made yesterday signifying that Bitcoin is having not only the very best having period of its entire life, it's having one of the best Septembers of its entire life. And a, variety, a couple of people actually took issue with the fact that I was saying that this is actually one of Bitcoin's best having. In fact, I'm not even saying that. I'm saying that this is Bitcoin's best having period of all time. And so, you know, I felt like despite the fact that I've actually touched upon this ad nauseum, despite the fact that I've done multiple live sessions and specifically showed you why this is the be very best having. It's has some value in doing it again, obviously. All right. Now, to be quite honest with you, I can't, I don't understand how people can't see this. And it leads me to believe that they're either stuck in their feelings or emotions and somehow are in at the all time highs and feel like this is not working. Maybe that's it. Maybe they're just intellectually blind as far as past cycles. And they see this multiple month period of no real true price appreciation as being negative and not extremely bullish. Maybe that's it. Or maybe they have ill intentions because they're really anti-Bitcoin and lean toward always wanting to spew a negative slant toward Bitcoin. I don't know. Um, the other option could be maybe they're just from a freaking other planet and the way they see Bitcoin from that planet is not the way it really is on this planet. I don't know, but I'm baffled at how people can't see this. To be honest with you. Now, of course, you can say that that's bias, but we're going to delve into the details. All right. We're going to get into the details and you tell me if I am off on this or not. I know I'm not, but you tell me anyway. All right. So come on in, guys. I'd like to have a, I'd like to have at least two or three hundred people logged on before we start delving into the weeds. So come on in. We've got almost 260 people. If we can get 300, I'd like to start. In the meantime, guys, let me know where you're coming from. What corner of the world? What country? What city? Where are you piping in from live here? We typically draw an international audience here. So um, Poland is here. Welcome, Poland. I love it. I love it. Poland is in the house. Um, what else, guys? Where else are you from? My first, this is probably my, my, my first trading loss of the, look, all right, Brooklyn's in the house as well here. I see it. 
probably my first trading loss of the year. Not the first, but I don't have many guys. I don't have any. I don't have many. When I do, they sting, though. They sting when I do. All right. Um, Monterrey, Mexico. Nice. Mexico's in the house. Oh, Germany's in the house here. New Jersey is in the house. Texas is in the house. All right, of course, the U.S. What city in the U.S.? we got Connecticut in the house. Dubai is in the house. I love it. Israel is in the house. Woo! International audience here. All right. Oh, my goodness. All over the place. St. Lucia. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And Cali's here. Oh, good guys, good guys. 360 so we can get started here. So look, as I was mentioning, the topic I want to actually put to rest here is this notion that Bitcoin is experiencing some soft or slower or poor, poorest Bitcoin having cycle of its history. This is exactly the opposite, guys. Bitcoin is breaking its own records. And we know that Bitcoin is the best performing asset on the planet Earth, the best performing asset of any asset that's ever existed. It has outperformed in virtually every single, by every single metric and every single time frame, everything that humans have ever considered to, to hold dear, important, anything that humans have respected it has blown everything out of the water. We know this. But now Bitcoin is breaking its own records. It broke everybody else's records. It's breaking its own records and it's doing it this cycle. And I, for one, can't see how people can't see this. It's in your face. The data is there. It's just that people have a very poor sense of history, in my opinion. And they have, we tend to, as a species generally, we tend to over accentuate the short term. And we under accentuate the longer term. And we really should reverse this. And so I think a lot of people are sort of caught up in Bitcoin's backing and filling and going back and forth over the short term without looking, without stepping back, expanding their view and seeing, well, wow, this is incredibly impressive. In fact, it's more impressive than any other time in Bitcoin's having cycled than before. So let's take a look at this. All right, let's take a look at this. Minnesota, welcome. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up some charts here. And I'm going to prove to you that Bitcoin is having the best post-having period and pre-having period of its life. Blessings. All right. Okay, let's go. Now, what you're looking at here, let me see if this is better. What you're looking at here, guys, is the last having cycle, the last having period to the left of the chart, and this having period, okay? The one that we're exist we're in now. Now, during the last having, okay, the last having, the last having occurred in May of 2020. Let's go to May of 2020. And I'm going to put a little arrow there, a little, little, little mark there. Let's go to May of 2020, right around here. Okay. So this is the last having period right there. Okay. That's the last having. Now, this is where we are this, now, let's go to the last halving of this cycle, okay? This is the last halving of last cycle. Let's go to the last halving of this cycle, which occurred in April, right here. Okay? Now, what you're looking at is the same period of time. See that? Since the having. 
same period of time since the habit. All right. So here we have September 21st, more or less, 20, September 21st of 2020. Here today, we're September 23rd. It's close enough. 2024. Having current day. Having last quarter equivalent current day. Now, we've got those two points, right? The other thing I want to bring your attention to is the prior cycle high. Prior, let me do this again here. Prior cycle high, high, we're at roughly $10,000. Prior cycle high is $20,000. So $10,000. Prior cycle high is 20,000. We are 100% below the prior high of the last cycle. Tell me you understand this so far, guys. Last cycle at this time after the halving, we're 10,000 more or less. The prior cycle's high is 20,000. We are 100% below on this day, right? This period of time, after have to have it, we still have 100% to go before we go to an all-time new high. 100% in September. We're in September now after the habit. This is going back to the September after the having last cycle. We're at this time. We've got 100% to go before we reach the all-time new high. Tell me you understand this. I'm not moving on until I see some comments. You got this so far? You got this? Make sense? Yes? I know we're on a delay, so I'm, I am going to wait. I'll take a sip of my tea. A few of you just let me know. I'm not going to move on until I see a few of you. Good. Okay. We got it. All good. Good. I see this. We got this. Boom. Good. Good. I'm getting responses. Yes, sir. Yes. 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 All good. Okay, good. Now, let's go to this cycle. September, same month after the having. September, after the having last cycle, September, after the having this cycle, okay? Now, last, we are at 63 now, 63, right? We're at 63, got that, prior High cycle, 69. Okay. 63 to 69. One, 10,000 to 20,000. Where, how is it that we can be trading a few thousand dollars right now below prior cycles high? When the last cycle, we are 100% below the prior cycle's high. How is this not better? We're, guys, I'm going to erase all of this. We're trading right at, no one can drop this. You see? No one can drop this. We're trading right at, We've never done that. We were, this was the case before. Look, look, let's, let's expand it so you can see it more clearly how off this idea is that we're having a poor one. Look at this. This was the last Cycle. This is the prior peak 
of the last cycle. Right there. September is right here. We do that. I don't want to do that. The hard cycle. Huh? September is right here. Let's get it. Let's get September. September's right there. Right? Right there. This is crazy. September's right there. We are ten thousand dollars one hundred percent is better than thinking percentage we're one hundred percent away from the prior cycles high at this same time after the having last last cycle now we go once again we go to this one here is the prior high. This is where we are now compared to the prior high. We're not 100% below it like this. That's would be equivalent to last time. 100% below the prior cycle's high would match last cycle. We're trading practically right at the prior cycle's high. How is this softer than the last one? How is this worse off than the last one? How is this slower than the last one? It's Bull shit. Do you understand? It's low IQ narratives. It's people that don't, they have no sense of what Bitcoin did before. They're going by their little tiny hurt feelings. Uh, they probably bought at 73. And because we're at 63, they feel like this is the slowest. This is the worst. Dude, come on. It's right here in your face. Oliver, but I'm down. I bought it 74. <laughs> that's, that's where it's probably coming from, right? All right. Okay. Um... So that metric, by that metric, which is a very good metric, this is the best because Bitcoin has never traded near its prior cycle high at this, has been trading near its prior cycle high at this point, never at this point, guys, after the having has Bitcoin been trading right there near its prior, prior high, never, 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 never. All right, that's one. Now let's go for two. Let's go for two. Point number two. Shall we? Yes, we shall. Okay, let's do it. Okay. What's the first, what's the next point? The next point is... That Bitcoin never made an all-time high. This was, guys, take a look at this. This is the last halving period. The halving took place here. Let's do it. The halving took place here. 
may. So it's a place here. This is the last having right there. I'm going to put a little circle there in that area. That's the last having. Prior to the having, there's usually a pump. See this pump? Prior to the having. Boom. Then we settle down into the having. See that? This bump has never, ever, 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 made a new high before the heaven. Never, ever, except 2024. You see what I'm getting at, guys? That pump. Bitcoin always has that pump off the low before the having. Always, always, that's always. But never, 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 never has that pump ever made a new high before the having. It's always fallen short of the high, come back into the habit. You see, just like last cycle. That is until this cycle. 2024. Let's go to the tape. Let's go to the charts here. All right. Let's go. Let me show you. So this having, you have do it. Oh, I keep doing this. Uh, Let's find out where the having took place April 19th, April 19th, April, more or less here. Here's the having right there. Okay, here's the having, a little dot there. So here is the having. But the pump is longer, stronger, more powerful than any pre-having pump in its history. So much so that we go to an all-time high, people, before... Before, before, the having. You see, normally this peters out down here. Do you understand? Normally it peters out way before that prior peak. Then it needs to jump 100% or more after the having sometime. But oh no, not this time. You understand? Not this time. Boom. We go to an all time new high. Not only does the pump not fail, we go straight to an all time new high before the having. Whereas that normally, You get this. Normally, you get this, guys. Boom, boom into the having, and your having takes place way down here, away from the high. Here, we go straight to new highs, never before done, and the having takes place later. Now, I ask you, am I looking at this wrong? Or am I demonstrating correctly that, whoa, something's different here. Bitcoin has accomplished things this having year that it's never been able to do in its past. Talk to me. Do you understand this? Does this make sense? 
Are you picking up what I'm laying down, people? Do you see this? I know we're on a delay. The feed is not truly real time. I know we're on a delay. But talk to me. Tell me. What I'm hoping this does. Make sense? I'm hoping this stops you from buying into these silly narratives that, man, what's wrong with Bitcoin? This is stupid. This is dumb. What do you mean what's wrong? And guys, when you see this clearly, do you know what you stop buying into? All of the BS out there. Oh, they're holding Bitcoin back. In what world? In what world is it being held back? It's higher than it's ever been. It's do, it's outperforming every other cycle that it's ever had. Holding it back where? What are you talking about? You'll stop buying into that BS, right? Another BS you'll stop buying into when you see this clearly. You'll stop buying into this notion that, oh, well, you know, they're, they're manipulating the price. What? Well, if they are manipulating the price, Einstein, they must be manipulating it up because it's more up than ever, than it's ever been at this point in a halving cycle. So if there is manipulation, it's to the upside. It is not to the downside. Bozo, again, ridiculous. These are people that are in their feelings. They couldn't wait. These are, these are notions that come from people that couldn't win. If you gave them three choices and all the choices were a win, they would still lose. And so they're caught in their losing emotions. They probably bought at the top, 74, and because we're not at 74 or beyond, they feel it's a failure just because of their ill-timed buy. Has nothing to do with reality. Where you act has nothing to do with the reality of, of things. And the reality is that Bitcoin has made a new high for the first time in its entire life before the habit. Reality is that Bitcoin is trading higher than it ever has in relationship to its prior cycle high than any other time in its in its entire life. Bitcoin is has not only broken the records of every other asset that human beings have held dear, it's breaking its own freaking records now. And you still have these idiot views. Oh, Bitcoin saw it. It's the worst having period. This is dumb. This is dumb. Now, I like this comment. Uh, you say, Oliver, last high may, was maybe muted. It was. There's no question about that. That it wasn't something by a plan or anything. It just got muted. Now, uh, it got muted by its hash rate being cut in half. Guys, the lifeblood of Bitcoin, irrespective of what people have told you or what you have bought into, what notion you've bought into, The life, it's blood that courses through Bitcoin's veins. That's the hash rate. No, it is not volume on the chain. No, it's not how many wallets. No, that's not it. That's not it. How many wallets have opened new wallets? That's those are bozo metrics. Does it matter? How many transactions per second? How many this, that, that? That's Bozo's metrics. That doesn't matter. The thing that matters the most is Bitcoin's hash rate. That is its power. That is its essence. That's the very blood that pipes through its veins. You hit the hash rate and you hit its very essence. And the China ban in May of 2021 did just that. China had most of the Bitcoin hash rate at that point. And by unplugging, forcing the China miners to unplug, hit the hash rate, which muted the upward momentum in Bitcoin at that particular time. Now, a lot of other narratives have popped up. 
oh, it was uh, the institutions were playing games and it was FTX, paper, Bitcoin, and da, 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 da. I'm telling you, it was the hash rate hit. Period. That's all. That's what muted the upward move. And so, uh, but I will also say this, because without that, I think Bitcoin would have been uh, north of $100,000 on its run in 2021. It was slated to do that. What I will say is this. Thank you. This is what I was saying. Thank you, China. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because at this time, guys, I was recovering from one of the biggest mistakes I made with my Bitcoin, guys. I sold off two thirds of my Bitcoin, which were thousands of Bitcoin, thousands. I sold off at 14,000. Remember, I'd accumulated as low as 3,800. Some of you were with me. Some of you were with me when we were buying sub 4,000, sub 5,000 Bitcoin, thousands of Bitcoin at a clip. I had 9,000 traders with me gobbling up Bitcoin on that drop below 5,000. We started at, we started actually below 6,000, 5,800, 5,300. We always do eights and threes. So we do 5,008, boom, next price. 5,003, boom, next price. 4,008, boom, next price. 4,003, boom, next price. 3,008, we got that 3,008 buy on one of the exchanges we were operating on. Not all of them. So Bitcoin, to make a long story short, does break out and I start selling at 14,000 like a freaking idiot. I accumulated sub 4,000, sub 5,000, sub 6,000. 14,000 is a huge gain. I let the gain, U.S. dollars, get to my head, and I started paring down what I would normally do with a regular asset. But it was right before I had my Bitcoin epiphany moment where I'm like, holy moly. That moment came, and it came shortly after I had already pared down. I was still going down the rabbit hole, and it hit me. What did I just do? Oh, my. And I was praying to my personal God that this thing would not run away from me because I wanted to accumulate those Bitcoins back. And Bitcoin kept teasing me. It would run away from me and then pull back a little bit and just a little bit more, just come back a little bit more and boom. Leave me in the dust again. And then I go, all right, listen, all right, I'm going to have to pay up, but just come back in a little bit more. It would tease me. Come back just a little bit. Just come back a little bit more. Boom, it left me. And I did this game, this cat and mouse game. Please come back in. Please come back in. Come back in a little bit. Leave me. Please come back in. Come back in a little bit. Leave me. And it left me in the dust all the way to $64,000. It was one of the biggest wealth errors of my whole four decade career. And I will tell you that it's the China ban. In addition to the, what people now refer to as the FTX collapse, those two things got me every single Bitcoin back. Had it not been for the China ban, that dropped us from 64 to, to 28 and change. I remember this like it was yesterday. I did. Now, I sold at 14. I'm picking it back up at 28. Very expensive. Very expensive. All right? And then we run up to 69, 
And the FTX collapse brings us all the way back almost to 14, 15,600 or so. And so the lowest price I got was 15,008. Remember, I like the eights and threes, 15,008, 15,003, 14,008, 14,003. I like those numbers. I'm not going to go into why. Those are good numbers. Anyway, so I got as low as 15,008. I did that here on X. I was gobbling up as much as I possibly could. Sub 16, because we you were getting close to that 14 that I'd gotten rid of my wealth at that particular time. When I tell you don't sell, I am speaking from personal experience. What an expensive lesson that was for me. And I was fortunate enough with the China ban and the FTX bear market to get it all back. Had it not been for the China ban, the FTX bear market would have would have been higher. Maybe we would have come back down to 40,000 instead of come back down to 15,000. And so these things taught me to appreciate the hits that Bitcoin takes in its USD denominated price. They only help us become wealthier four years later. Unless my buys, which a lot of them I posted right here on X, my buys at 15,008, 16, 16,003, those buys didn't take four years to make me wealthier. But I'm just saying to be on the safe side, every single buy. You should think this buy made me richer four years from now. My four-year future self is jumping up and down right now just because I bought this Bitcoin today. That I am mathematically guaranteed to be wealthier, bigger, richer, more independent, more free, more powerful four years from today just because I bought Bitcoin today. In every single buy, if you buy it tomorrow, four years from tomorrow. If you buy it next week, four years from next week. If you buy it next month, four years from next month. And every single one will reward you by making you bigger, stronger, powerful, faster. Do you guys remember that? Steve Austin, $6 million man. Am I dating myself? Am I the only one who watched that series? We will, we will rebuild him. We'll make him better, better than he was before. Better, stronger, faster. Okay. I know I'm silly, but you still love that series. I don't know about you. Most of you weren't born. 1970s. Bitcoin will make you better than you were before. Better, stronger, faster, richer, wealthier, more powerful more independent, more free. That show was great, wasn't it? Bitcoin Alley? Oh, loved it. I even had the, I even had guys, the, the, the Steve Austin doll, I got it for Christmas. Crazy. Lee Majors, that's right. You guys remember the Lee Majors, Steve Austin doll? Huge. It's kind of weird that he was huge because I used to play with the Steve Austin doll with my G.I. Joe, and the G.I. Joe was little compared to the Steve Austin doll. I remember that. Anyway. <laughs> All right, cool. That's funny. The Conali had it too. I love that. <laughs> so thank you, China. Thank you. Thank you. Um, scam, bankrupt, fraud, SBF. Thank you. Thank you, Celsius. Thank you, Block Fry. Thank you, SEC. Thank you, Gary Gensler. Thank you, 
for paper Bitcoin. Thank you. Thank you for short-term manipulative games in the Forex market. I mean, in the futures market. Thank you. All you do, all you do, when you do anything that might influence Bitcoin's USD denominator price, that all you do is make me wealthier four years from now. Thank you. Thank you. That's the attitude you need. This is the only, this is the first thing in the human species that has delivered certainty to us. Nothing has ever been certain. And the reason why, for the first time, we have a protocol that delivers certainty, that we have an asset that delivers certainty, because men, human beings, little men who want to accumulate power, centralized power and control, these little men can no longer, can't touch this. The human being can't influence this. The human being can't mess it up. The human being can't debase it. The human being can't see it, can't feel it, can't touch it, can't go to it. And so outside, it lives outside of human purview. It lives outside of human control, yet lives inside of the human at the same time. Your 12 to 24 words is your Bitcoin, and you are never separated from your 12 to 24 words in reality. Your word is your bond. Your word is your Bitcoin. For the first time in the human experience, your word means something. Your word is everything that you are. Your word is your value. Your word is your bond. Your word is your Bitcoin. Your word is your future. Your word is your wealth. Your word is your riches. Your word is the symbol of, of the value that you have given to society in the form of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is your words, and no one can steal words from you. Those words represent numbers, mathematics. No one can steal math. No one can change the fact that one plus one equals two. No one can change the fact that there's a zero and nine other digits. No one can change these things. Humans can't influence mathematics and humans can't outlaw letters or language or, or halt communication. No one in this world can say from this day forward, I ban the letter B because the letter B stands for Bitcoin and no other human on earth can ever use Bit the letter B again. Good luck with that. This can't be banned. It can't be stopped. It can't be halted by human beings because it lives outside of the control and the purview of human beings. Yet at the same time, it lives inside of us at the same time. It's just so unique and different that it's hard for people at this particular stage and its evolution to wrap their minds around it because it's there's never been anything like it. Except, except the things, some of the things that we today will die for. Bitcoin is not the first thing to come into existence that you can't see, feel, touch, taste, smell, affect, influence, control. It's not the first. It's the first form of value or money that's come in that form. But think about what we hold the most dear in our lives today. Love. Show me where love is. Point to it. I want to go there. I want to hold it in my hands. I want to wrap my hands around love. I want to kiss it because I adore it so much. Just show me where it is. You can't. Yet people die and commit crimes for love. Yet they've never seen it, never touched it, never smelled it never tasted it, experienced it, but it's outside of the physical human realm. Yet many of us would die for it. Many of us would wither away without it. 
it's not just love, justice, peace, honesty, decency, cleanliness, forthrightness, righteousness, fairness, respect. You can have an act of respect, but show me respect itself. Where is it? Where does it live? Bitcoin is not the only thing that lives outside of the human purview, yet is still adored by the human being. <clears throat> it's the first one that captures value. You see, love doesn't capture monetary value. In fact, a lot of times love has been, if you have a lot of love, you tend it throughout history to have less monetary value in your life. So it was like a seesaw. I love big, but I don't earn big. I mean, artists show that. Their their artists are there is an act of love was an artist, is an act of love. An artist is a lover. In all forms, they're givers, right? And most artists are broke. Barring the few that gain success, the, the millions and for every one, there's tens of millions that don't. So in the past, these things, the abundance of these things usually did not equate to monetary value. A person who was too fair, another immaterial good that you couldn't feel, touch, or see, too much fairness didn't equate to monetary success. Too much love didn't equate to monetary success. You understand? Too much righteousness didn't equate to monetary success. So for the first time, we had one of these ethereal things that does not live in the purview of human beings that is extraordinarily valuable and yet does deliver that monetary equivalent, that value equivalent that you can love Bitcoin and be wealthy and have more value that you don't, there's no trade off to it. It's very powerful. All right? Honest money will build a better world. There's no question about it. Honest money will create a better world because money is the representation of my life. And if that representation is better, and I use that representation to communicate to you and deal with you, then our dealings between each other become pure and real and valuable. And that is what uplifts all of humanity. You see, it's not that we're the only species on the planet that trades. There are there are some small trading that goes on in the animal kingdom. It's very tiny and very primitive. We are the higher spe- we are the highest species because we trade. Because I trade, I can trade with you. You have something I need, and I can trade for you for that. Because I trade with you, I don't have to kill you. Do you understand this? If I could not trade with you and you had something I needed to survive, I would have to kill you or you me. Because we trade, we are civilized. Because we trade, we do not have to take via violence. Because we trade, we do not have to murder and kill. That is more in the animal kingdom. Because there's very little trade in the animal kingdom, they must kill others to survive. You and I don't have to because we can trade with each other. And because of that, we are the higher species. So that's one of the reasons we are the higher species. We trade. 
Now, what we trade with must be pure and true and honest, because if it's not, then the whole trading dynamic breaks down. If I have something better, if I trade with you something valuable and I give you something poor in return, this creates strife. It creates conflict. And we go backwards. If I have something of value and you give me bullshit for it and compel me to make the trade on top of that, then we have a breakdown in the trade dynamic, in civilization. It is only when trade is real, pure, and fair that we progress as a, as a, as a, as a civilized society. The advancement of all societies can, can be directly linked. They, it is inextricably intertwined with trade and commerce. The, the better the trade and commerce, the higher the society. It is how we deal with each other. We trade. And again, if the money that we use to trade is broken, then the entire dynamic is broken and leads to an erosion in the fabric of society itself. That is very true. This Thanksgiving will be different it's, if it's your first as a Bitcoiner. See, Gen X BTC knows we're coming into that period of the year. Guys, we're Bitcoin. Just stupefies. We're close. Your time is running out. All right. Hello, boss from Kent, England. Kent, England's in the house. Stuart, welcome. All right. It is mind blowing. This is very true. Bitcoin always pumps during my talks, guys. Mike, you know this. <laughs> this is true. It's pretty uncanny, guys. It's pretty uncanny how many times many of the people listening here can tell you. It's uncanny how many times I get on and Bitcoin starts pumping. It's crazy. We started at 50, 63.1. We're at 63.6. All right, a little tiny bit. What is that, a pump for ants? Yeah, but it's still something. All right. Is there any advantage to holding IBIT versus FBTC just for holding long term? Um, let's get a few things straight first before I really attack this question. I need you to understand that and a spot a Bitcoin ETF is not Bitcoin. It is a product that is based on Bitcoin. So think of it this way. You have the Mona Lisa. And then you have some shops on the side of the Louvre. I don't know if you've been to Paris where the Mona Lisa is. The Louvre, the, Louvre, the museum. <clears throat> there are some shops that you can go to near the Louvre that will sell you a carbon copy. It'll look similar to the real one. It's a carbon copy. You can pick them up for 5, 10, 15 euro, depending upon the size. All right? But it's not the Mona Lisa. You see, Bitcoin in self-custody is the Mona Lisa. These things are carbon copies that you can pick up for a fraction that will never be the real thing, ever, ever. They're representatives of the real thing, but they're not the real thing. You see, the ETF itself has the real thing. You have shares that are the representation of the real thing. So with this being said, let me ask you a question. Would you rather have the Mona Lisa itself 
or carbon copy of it? I know the answer. So I don't want you to believe that ETFs and spot and real Bitcoin and self-custody are the same. Please don't do this. I have no problem with you having some ETF exposure, but not at the expense of real Bitcoin and self-custody. Do not do that. You're a bozo if you do. All right. You're a carbon copy gobbling bozo if you do. We want the freaking original. Do you understand? We want the real thing. Okay. With that being said, let me get to the question more directly. IBIT versus FBTC. I say you should have both. And let me tell you why. Because you're not self-custodying the Bitcoin and you don't want 100% exposure to one custodian. And so FBTC has its own custodial solution. They've been in the Bitcoin game since 2013, maybe even before. They know what they're doing. All right. This is not some fly by night firm. All right. And so their own, they've never lost Bitcoin as far as I'm concerned since 2013. That's saying a lot. They're one of the first major institutional firms to get heavily involved in the Bitcoin space. Fidelity knows what they're doing. All right. So you want some there. You probably want some exposure to the IBIT Black Rocks as well. We know that the Black Rock is um, one of, if not the largest um, uh, wealth managers in the world with close to $11 trillion under management. We know they have a lot of influence and control, but they also have a separate, different custodial arrangement with Coinbase, which they recently modified the agreement for. So I would not want 100% exposure to one custodian if I'm not custodying myself. All right. So there is an argument for having both. There's also an argument for maybe skewing the mix to BlackRock simply because BlackRock who's been vying for this, was chosen by the SEC to basically be the options king of the asset class. So Bitcoin is a brand new asset class. And let me tell you this, whenever you can become the options king of an asset class, you print money forever. Did you hear what I said? Listen to what I'm saying, people. This is my field now. Everyone races to be the the options to be dubbed the options king in an asset class. Every asset class has an options king. You understand? The main one, that main one can print money because they are the options king. They can print money forever, forever, as long as that asset class. Is. And we know the Bitcoin asset class is going to be here for long, long after we're gone. So they're going to print money forever. Now, there will be options on others like eventually Fidelity, da, 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 but they're not going to be the options king. And so if you want to take advantage of some option strategies in conjunction with your Bitcoin strategy, which it's not a bad idea. Um, you'll probably want some exposure to the IBIT because that's where your spreads are going to be the smallest. Your fees are going to be the lowest. Your opportunities are going to be the greatest. Always with the options king. Do you understand? And IBIT's been chosen. Now, the options king is chosen largely by volume. Most people thought that in the beginning of the spot Bitcoin ETF approvals that assets under management were the main thing. It is. One of the main things, but the real main thing is volume. It's a race for volume because usually the volume king, not necessarily the assets and the management king, although they often coincide, but not necessarily. The options king gets the options blessing. Do you understand? And so as much as this was a race for assets under management, it was a bigger race for who's going to have the best, vo- the biggest volume to get dubbed the options king and BlackRock has it. So if you want to 
get into uh, some option strategies such as adding an income stream to your Bitcoin, you probably want some IBIT exposure. If you want to get into things like hedging during a, a Bitcoin's bear market decline, softening the blow of the decline, or even turning the decline into a potential profit-making opportunity while never having to sell your Bitcoin, probably want some IBIT. If you want to get into things like um, uh, buying bit, being paid to buy Bitcoin through uh, selling a selling put strategy, yes, you can be paid to buy Bitcoin. You can be paid to buy the, the, the spot Bitcoin ETFs. Somebody can pay you to do that and add an income stream on top of your buy. So instead of just buying it, you can get paid and then buy it through a puts, through an options, a put selling strategy. So if these things have interest to you, then you probably want to skew toward IBIT. All right? Because that's where your best options opportunity are going to emerge because they're the options team. All right. Good. <laughs> so whatever Oliver says the word forever. I love it. <laughs> forever. Woo. Do you see the Bitcoin? Okay. <laughs> Some of my traders know what that means. Guys, a little inside joke there. Look at where we look at where we were earlier. All right. Our Bitcoin ATM machines safe to buy from, good or bad. They can be helpful, yes. Um, you a couple things regarding Bitcoin uh, ATMs. I loved when um, I loved that period of time for this reason, not for any other reason. I didn't love it for another reason. I loved it for this reason: the time when most of the world was being forced to put a piece of cloth, a diaper on their mouth. You remember that time, right? Well, with the cap sunglasses in this diaper, you didn't have to be so concerned with Bitcoin ATMs taking film and pictures of you, right? Um, so I just prefer the ATMs that offer um, no personal identification given under a certain amount. So you buy under that amount because Listen, guys, it's not that you're a criminal or want to hide from anything. Human right to privacy. We don't sleep with our doors wide open, our curtains up and our bedroom windows wide open for passersby in the world to see what we do in our bedroom. We do that because we have a right to privacy. We have a right to not let anyone know what you do in your bedroom. You have a right to not let anybody know what you're doing with your money that you earned. So there's nothing illegal about wanting privacy. And so seeking out an ATM that doesn't violate your privacy by requiring where you live, what your social security number is, you know, ID with your your telephone number, your address. This is very dangerous in a world with, in which Bitcoin is going to become the most valuable thing on planet Earth. Do you understand that at 150,000 or so, Bitcoin becomes the most valuable item on Earth outside of gold? I mean, think about that. 150 is a stone's throw away, people. 150,000 is a stone's throw away. You will see this next year. I'm telling you, you're going to see Bitcoin go to number two on planet Earth outside of gold. It is going to take out Apple. It's going to take out Microsoft. It's going to take out all of that. 
And the only thing, only single asset, not asset class, the only single item more valuable in bulk will be gold. It's going to take everything out and go from number nine or 10 right now to number two in the world. But I want you to understand how potentially dangerous this is. When everyone in the world knows that Bitcoin is the most valuable thing on planet Earth, it will become the most desirable thing on Earth. And your information is out there as floating on the Internet that you buy every single week from Coinbase. Like, are you kidding me? This is just putting X's on our back. I have a big I know I have X's on my back. I sacrifice privacy just to teach it. And it's not something that I don't think about. As Bitcoin's value goes up, your privacy will become more priceless to you. You know? Think about all the implications. You're ordering Bitcoin merchandise to your house. And the UPS guy or the FedEx guy knows that this guy's a Bitcoiner. That's not cool. Do you understand? Not when this thing goes to number one in the world. That's not cool. So we have to think about these things. As far as ATMs are concerned, if you can do one without a camera, better. If you can do one that you don't have to give up any information, let's say it's less than $1,000 at a time, you don't have to give any information, good. I have a friend who does this every time he travels a lot, every time he's in a different country, he finds a Bitcoin ATM, boom, picks them up. And let me tell you this, don't worry so much about the spread on these things. You know, the real price of Bitcoin is non-KYC Bitcoin. Um, the discounted price is what you get on a centralized exchange, but that discount comes at a very big cost. It comes at the cost of your privacy and you giving up your personal identification and information which is, as I said, in the future is going to become more and more precarious for you. All right. Um, good afternoon. Is point one a good account of BTC as a goal? Well, this is all relative. So, yeah, I, guys, look, I want you to think about this. There was a time in Bitcoin's history, where having 10,000 Bitcoin was normal. As normal. I mean, you heard of the Bitcoin pizza guy. He was buying pizzas for 10,000 Bitcoin a clip. 10,000, 5,000 Bitcoin a clip. And the first time he did it is what got all the attention. But a lot of people don't know that he kept doing it until all of his Bitcoin was gone. He had something like 80,000 Bitcoin and he gave all of it away for pizza. Now, I'm sure he's still fine. But do you understand what I'm saying? But that wasn't that. That was normal. 10,000 Bitcoin wasn't worth anything. A lot of people had that. But look at what it is now. Now, very few people have 10,000. And it's extraordinarily valuable. Then we went to a time where a lot of people, even more, had 1,000 Bitcoin. That was normal. Almost everybody you met in the Bitcoin store, everybody had more than 1,000 Bitcoin. Now, you can barely... You don't know anymore what 1,000 Bitcoin. They might tell you they have one, but you don't know anymore. You don't really know anymore what 1,000 Bitcoin. Whereas if before, everyone you bumped into would have 1,000 or more if they were in the Bitcoin space. Now, no one you know has 1,000 Bitcoin. But look at how valuable it is. So see how the, the numbers, the zeros get dropped? We went from 10,000 to 1,000. Same number one, just the zeros disappeared. 1,000. Most of you don't know anyone with 100 Bitcoin. 
99% of you can't find one person in your life with 100 or more Bitcoin. Now, 100 is rare. We've dropped another zero. There will be a time when you can't find someone with 10. More than half of you can't find someone with 10. Today, dropped another zero. There will be a time, probably next cycle, 2028, 2029, you won't be able to find someone with one Bitcoin. I guarantee it. It'll be hard to find someone with one Bitcoin next cycle. One with no zero in front of it, behind it. That's next cycle. You won't find no one in your family, none of your friends. Some of you right now, none of your friends, no one in your family, no one you personally knows has one Bitcoin. Now let's go to this number that all in one Johnson's asking about. It's coming. Just like 10,000 became 1,000, just like 1,000 became 100, rare, just like 100 went to 10, rare, 10 is going to one, rare, and one's going to a tenth, rare. Oh, yes, we're going to go all the way down to dust. Do you understand this? Dust. The majority of the world will deal in Bitcoin dust, small satoshis, which are going to be valuable, but small satoshis. The, the, the vast majority of humanity will deal with Satoshi. That's how fortunate we are today to not be dealing in Satoshis. We're dealing more with fractions instead of micro fractions, which are Satoshis. We're still dealing with half of a Bitcoin, three quarters of a Bitcoin. Some people are still dealing with single digits of Bitcoin. That's how fortunate we are. But Think about this, people. It is estimated there, that there are 8 billion people living on Earth today. Only 0.5, half of 1% are in Bitcoin today. So there's 7, there's 99.5% of the rest of the world has to come in. And they will. In addition to that, it is estimated that by the year 2050, there will be 10 billion people on Earth. At the current rate of human growth, every single day, net of debts, net of all debts, a quarter of a million of these human beings pop up on Earth every single day. The number of human beings that have just come into existence in this one hour and 13 minutes I've been talking to you is unfathomable. A quarter of a million new net. There's more if we don't include the debts. I'm talking about net new human beings sucking up resources on planet Earth. New people, which means if there's 250,000 new people that will be that will join the internet. 250,000 new people every single day that will ultimately be Bitcoiners. 2,500,000 2, new people every single day that will be smartphone users, that will be uh, computer users. It's growing by a quarter of a million people a day. A day. 250,000 new Bitcoiners come into the world every single day, which means that every single Satoshi becomes more rare per human being, more valuable per human being. Every Bitcoin becomes more valuable per human being every day by 250,000 people. More people, more demand, same supply, more value. It's simple maths, people. And so 
These are all the contributing factors that mathematically guarantee that Bitcoin makes you wealthier, richer, bigger, faster, more independent, more free every single four years of your life. Less, but let's go with the conservative number every four years. It's mind boggling. And so, yes, there will be a point where 0.1 Bitcoin will be rare. You will not be able to find human beings with one point, with 0.1 Bitcoin very easily. But most of you guys are going to mess it up because most of you guys are going to give it to people like me who will never sell it. And there's going to be a point, I'm telling you, there's going to be a point where you're going to sell it for paper, for bullshit, and you're never going to get it back again. You see, the Bitcoin that I buy, and I buy virtually every single day, that Bitcoin will never see the light of day, ever. Do you, you hear what I'm saying? Every time Bitcoin dips, I just buy more. That, that Bitcoin is gone forever. My purchase made Bitcoin rarer than it ever was. Do you understand? Ever. And... The Oliver Belezes of this world are only growing in number every hour. Every day, there's a new Oliver Belez that says, you know what? There's nothing more superior than this. I'm not selling. I don't care what you do with the price. I don't care if the price does a backflip, a cartwheel, a front flip. I don't care if it jumps up and down, falls on the floor and starts crying. I don't care. I will not let the U.S. dollar price tell me what I have. I know what I have. And price is not going to trick me out of it. And the numbers of people that are getting it this way are only growing, which means that what they accumulate will never be made available. At some point, you're going to give up your Bitcoin and you will never give it back. The same way I gave up Bitcoin at 14000 and I never got it back at 14000 I paid up dearly to get it back. Painfully to get it back. And you're going to find yourself in this. Most of you are going to find yourself in that scenario. Most of you, unfortunately, it's just the way it goes. Come in. That's right. So, yes, by 2044, the block reward will be 0.1 Bitcoin. So it will be astronomical, of course. Good point. I know you made the correction. <clears throat> Of 20, 2044. Diamond hands, baby. <clears throat> Diamond hands. Forever. <laughs> also, Bitcoiner. God bless you all of them. God bless you too. God bless you too. Peter, hello, guys. I've been talking for an hour and 17 minutes. We can start now. This has all been a warm up because Peter has finally come and said hello. All right, let's begin. All right, thanks for coming, Peter. We were waiting for you. <laughs> but, uh, love it, love it. This is so bearish. We can't even find anyone we know what 10 Bitcoin on. That's right. Not even five or one. And adoption, I love this statement. And adoption has just started. Think about this, guys. He has such... It's so powerful, right? Less than half of 1% have Bitcoin in the entire world. Now, some people take issue with me, man. They say, Oliver, come on, there's more than that. All right, we'll find you someone. Prove it to me. Who in your family has Bitcoin? Let's go to your friends. How many of your friends have Bitcoin? All right. Go to the groups that you participate in, your church, your son's little league baseball gathering, that, 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 that. How many people are those in your little groups at Bitcoin? Zero point five percent of the entire world has Bitcoin. I know it can seem different if you get too focused on this little tiny eco chamber on X. I'm on X.com. Everybody has Bitcoin. 
No, that's too, that's a very tiny ecosystem. You go out into the world, you start traveling, nobody has it. And yet with no one in, no one, you can barely find, you obviously barely find someone with one. With no one in, it's become the best performing asset the world has ever known with no one in, with half of 1%. Where do you think it's going to be with 1%, 3%, 5%, 10%? We're already beat everything human beings have ever adored with half of 1%. We're already went from zero to $63,000 per unit with half of 1%, a little pinch of salt, a little yeast has risen the loaf of bread called Bitcoin to heights nothing else in the world has ever reached, has ever matched with half of 1%. Can you imagine when we start experiencing the adoption of the iPhone, the adoption of electricity, the adoption of the automobile, the adoption of the internet, the adoption of smartphones, the adoption of, of laptop computers. We haven't even begun and it's kicking everyone's ass. <laughs> My God, the future is so huge, people. It's so freaking huge, no? Crazy. That's right. They're just not awake yet, but they will be. Uh, how many people do you know with 10 or 100 BTC? Well, that's a little unfair because guys like, you know, You know, I operate with some fairly well-heeled market participants. So remember I told you when we went in, I made this public, guys. I went on public and announced when I went in. You, Most of you guys have seen that. You've seen me go live when I made my first Bitcoin purchase. I made sure I made that public. All right. And um, I didn't even show that to you. But uh Yeah. Anyway, you know, because I operate, you know, I'm in the financial markets, you know, the, the average person has more resources. So I know a lot of people with I know people with that. We have th thousands of Bitcoin. But that's not a normal segment to draw from. When I step outside of my worlds, right, my market playing worlds with you know, professional traders, hedge fund operators and OTC desk, desk operators and stuff like that. When you step outside of that world, that number drops precipitously. Your first, it's virtually impossible to have someone even have Bitcoin. And the ones that do don't have anywhere close to one. They're underexposed. This is what I call the world is short the upside of Bitcoin, which means that they must buy in the future. It's impossible not to have to buy in the future. They must buy in the future. That's like a short seller must buy to close the trade. Well, everyone's short. The world is short. Every financial institution that doesn't have Bitcoin, they're short Bitcoin. They're going to have to buy to, to get out of the short. Every insurance company has to buy to get out of their short of Bitcoin. Every pension fund has to buy Bitcoin in the future to get out of their short. They're short the upside of Bitcoin right now. And let me tell you something. Once Bitcoin passes $150,000, making it the most valuable thing on earth outside of gold, it doesn't even matter if these people like Bitcoin or not. They will be compelled to put it on the balance sheet. You can not, in my world, guys, in the financial world, you cannot not have exposure to number one. What do you think the number one most owned stock in the world is? It's Apple. Why? Because Apple has held number one asset spot for a long time. 
Recently, NVIDIA and Microsoft have been neck and neck, but the bottom line is that Apple has been the dominant number one for many years. This is why Apple is the most owned stock on planet Earth. And when Bitcoin takes all of them out next year, you will have to have some exposure to number one. It is impossible. You will get fired. You will get eliminated. You will be no more if you do not have exposure to the best, the number one, the the most valuable thing on earth outside of gold. You cannot not. So every insurance company, every pension fund, every mutual fund, every ETF, it just doesn't even matter if an ETF guy's focus is on real estate. Do you understand that every real estate ETF will add Bitcoin to it? You think it's just about the spot ETFs that buy Bitcoin? Oh, you have no idea what's coming, people. Every real estate ETF will buy Bitcoin. Every gold ETF will add Bitcoin to it. I guarantee you, watch me. You heard it here first. Every industry ETF will add Bitcoin. Every mutual fund, I don't care if the mutual fund focuses on dividend stocks, they're going to add Bitcoin as a base layer on the balance sheet of every fund, every ETF, every insurance company, every pension fund, every publicly traded company, every single corporation, company, entity in the world. They're going to add, number one, in some way, to the bottom line. Almost every American owns Apple. Almost every American owns Apple, directly or indirectly. If you got a 401k plan, I promise you, you own Apple. If you got a mutual fund, I promise you, you own Apple. If you got an insurance policy, I promise you, it's backed by Apple. You can not not have exposure to number one. Bitcoin's going to become number one next year, which means the world will have to crash into it. Even the people that don't like it, even the people that hate it, even the people that think it's magic internet money, if they run a fund, they run a company, they're going to have to add it anyway. I'm sure there are people who have Apple on the balance sheet. They run a fund or something like that. They don't like Apple products, but they still have it. (laughs) I appreciate that, Rommel. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Um, Imagine... If somebody at Master MSTR runs away with the keys, I would say that that's pretty close to impossible. Um, you know, these corporate security measures guys are very involved. They are multi-institutional, which drops the odds that there's corroboration between all of the institutions. All right. Um, that's in a regulated world, that's almost impossible to get every single organization. Let's say there's eight different organizations involved, institutions, they're all regulated. To get all eight to want to do the, 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 the illegal thing, it's very, very, it's pretty, you, those are things you can pretty say is impossible. And the custody is corporate or institutional style multi-sig across multiple organizations and scores of people. It's like, how do you coordinate something bad in a scenario like that? We can never say impossible, but it's close. So you don't have to worry about somebody's somebody like micro strategies or, or sailors Bitcoin disappearing through that act, those things happened more in the beginning days. Now, you you won't hear much about those things going forward. All right. Well, I think Bitcoin will, will revisit the 50s one last time 
before taking off your opinion? Well, let me just say this. I don't think so, but we can pray. It would only be a gift. So just let us pray. We still have a little bit of September to go through. And remember, guys, the bullish period for Bitcoin, um, the, the most bullish part of the year is the latter part of the year, right? You guys know this. You know what All of you guys know this, right? I posted this, and I, I'm, I'm going to leave you with this, guys. So where I run, but I'm going to leave it. I've been with you long enough here. But um, take a look at this. I'll post it again. I'll show you here. All right. So if you look at this, I want you to look at what's coming, guys. If history is any guide, and it is a guide. I always use that term because it's popular. If if history is any guide, it is a guide. It's the only guide. I hate when people really say that. If history is any guide, it is a guide. It's the only guide we have. What What other guide is there? Everything else is guessing, right? History is not guessing. So it's the only guide we have. So here, um, if we look at what happens in October, on average, you see what happens in September is mostly red. You see? The average September is down negative 7%. That's the average down. That's the average performance of a September. And then every average after that is plus. Plus. But wait, let's continue. This is October, November, December, plus. But then go here. The January, plus. February, plus. March is marginally plus. And the average months all the way to May, I think it's May, or no, it's all the way to July. These are all net plus pluses. So after September being net negative down on average, every month after that is a net, is an average plus. Not every month is a plus, but it's an average plus meaning that if you averaged out all of them all the way to July, the only negatives are August and September. And so if you were to look at, for instance, like the last time we are positive in September, this is one of the biggest positives in in the life, the biggest Septembers in the entire life of Bitcoin. The only one bigger so far is 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 2012. Now look at what happened in 2012. We did go down the following month. All right? But then look at what happened after. Up up up. Wait, that's the wrong year. 2013. Up. Look at these numbers. Up up up. So what followed was astronomical. What you tend to find, just like last year, up, up, up. Well, last year we had even had an up September, but marginally. But you get October up, November up, December up, January up, February up, March up. We even had April up. Do you understand the battery of months that are going to skew to the upside after a few weeks from now? Oftentimes, the beginning of October is still a little shaky. It's the latter part of October that is blast off times, which means, guys, that if this pans out on average, the way it does on average, it is not until late October that we get blast off, but we can hit any time. That's just using the average of what it does The average of what it does is on average, the blast off period is within the last two weeks of October. I've done the work for you. And so the last week about the last couple of weeks of October starts to blast off. November accelerates. 
into the next year. All the way into the next year and not just the beginning of next year, the deep into the next year. And so, guys, I'm telling you, and one last thing I will leave you with, this is a having year, 2024. If we were to study all of the habits, the most bullish period of the having is not the year of the having. It's the year after 2025. That's the meteoric one. You understand? That's the exponential one. That's the wow year in the four-year cycle. And what ignites the wow year starts in late October. So the start of 2025 historically is late October, early November. That's the start of the bull run that becomes exponential in 2025. And so here's what we need to do. Knowing this, we need to thank and bless from our heart all the people selling Bitcoin today. You can buy today because someone's willing to sell it to you. And we should take a moment of Silent appreciation for the people who just do not know. The people who do not know what this is or what they have. To get rid of Bitcoin now? I showed you the the calendar. Now? My dad used to say, you can't fix stupid. And thank God he was right. We need the other side, people. We need the sellers to give it to us. You take that away, and we can't increase our wealth over the next four years. So thank our lucky stars. Thank your personal God for people who don't study. Thank your personal God for people who have not done 10 hours of work on this. Thank your personal God for people who look at it to just earn U.S. dollars. Thank your personal God for people who are easily shaken. Oliver, I'm scared. It's volatile. I'm scared. Thank your personal God for that weak ass attitude. Thank your personal God for these fear based soy boys that are warriors on their keyboard, but weak with their hands when they have Bitcoin. I thank them every single day. But they know not what they do, and they know not what they have. (laughs) All right, guys. Love you to death. Uh, I hope I didn't bore you too much here on my little rants here, but... uh... But Oliver... That's right. All right. <laughs> I had guys, if but Oliver had a name and a profile, I found it yesterday. If but Oliver had a name, like if you could look up that term in the dictionary, right? Let me look up but Oliver, and you looked it up in a dictionary, and you would see a picture of this guy. There. Oh, that's that's what but Oliver looks like, right? This guy, <laughs> this guy yesterday was saying when I was showing the calendar, right? He was saying, but Oliver, when I was saying this is the best, one of the best Septembers ever in Bitcoin's history. The only one is this one that has outperformed it. This guy says, but Oliver. Look at what happened this year, the next month. We were down. But Oliver, I know it's the best September, but Oliver, what if 2012 repeats? And I'm like, dude, what if 2012 repeats? You're talking about the best performing asset 
in all of human history. And you're saying, but I hope it doesn't repeat. Holy shit. If but Oliver had a name, it would be that guy. It would be that guy's picture and his pro profile right under that in Webster's Dictionary. But Oliver, what if 2012 repeats Oliver? Dude, we'd all be we'd all be having these live sessions really live from 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 Tahiti somewhere. My goodness. All right. All right, guys, listen, love you to death. Ciao for now. You know what to do. Go to work. Go to work. Boom. Boom. All right. Ciao, guys. My name is Oliver Velez, and I am your 13%er Bitcoiner. Be safe out there, and until next time. Boom.